today's topic, we're going to be discussing your dip switches, your S1 reset button, and your S3 clear memory button. Here we're looking at a Nate Reader access control unit. To the top right of the access control panel, you'll find the dip switch bank. You'll also notice push button S1 at the bottom of this bank, S3 at the top of the bank. The bank itself contains 12 dip switches, all controlling different features and functionality of the board depending on your system's configuration and desired response. It's important to understand that all key scan units are shipped with default settings. This means that all access control units will function in a standard access control environment without the need to alter these dip switch settings. However, you may have to change certain switches to reconfigure the unit for your specific operating requirements. We'll show you how to do this in this segment. Let's begin our review of the switches and their functions, starting with switch 1 found at the bottom of the bank. Switch 1 is used to select your communication mode. By default, this switch is set off. This will allow the panel to use a standard method of communication, either a serial direct connection or static IP communication within a local or wide area network. By turning this on, you can now configure the panel for reverse network communications. Reverse network communications is selected to allow communications of an access control unit over the internet. This is often selected for Keyscan centrally managed access control applications or Keyscan hosted services. Switch 2 and Switch 3 control the communication baud rate of your access control unit. The default baud rate for all access control units is set to 57.6 kilobits per second. You may need to change this baud rate of an access control unit in any case you're retrofitting it to an existing Keyscan installation that may not support this baud rate. You can also increase the baud rate of an access control unit to 115.2 kilobits per second when it is equipped with an onboard Netcom 2P. This will provide you with a faster communication rate of your access control units for faster uploads. Switch 4 and Switch 5 are used to generate an alternate serial number in the event that the serial number already exists within the system's configuration. Please note that these switches are not applicable to Keyscan Aurora software. Any access control unit compatible with Aurora will consist of a 7 character serial number. If you are using System 7 or Vantage software and you enter a duplicate serial number in the settings, then the software will generate a message indicating that the serial number already exists. This will also prompt you for your options to generate an alternate serial number, which is when you would use these dip switches. You must now choose one of these options to generate an alternate serial number and use that serial number to add the control panel to the system. Switch 6 is turned off by default. Turning this switch on will enable the lockdown functionality of the access control units. This will allow you to trigger a lockdown event from an input on the access control unit. For CA250s, input number 8 will become your designated lockdown trigger. On a CA4500 or 8500, input 16 will be your designated input trigger. These are the designated inputs where you may connect an input device, such as a panic button on the wall, and give you the ability to initiate a lockdown event. This will also give you the ability to lock down all enabled control units from the lockdown screen on the client software. If you're looking to do a global lockdown function, Keep in mind you will require a SIM module in each of your control panels that are going to be globally locked down by this event on the input trigger or your lockdown screen. Switch 7 and 8 are used to select your communication connection of access control units. You can select between RS-232, Netcom 2P, CPB-10-2 or CB-485 options. When you're retrofitting an access control unit, you will need to change the settings to a CPB10-2 or CB485 option. The default option for all access control units will have both 7 and 8 turned off. This will select your RS-232 connection to the control panel. You'll have to choose the required method of connection for communications to your control unit as required. Switch 9 and 10 are reserved for Keyscan hosted service applications only. These switches will allow you to select the default IP address to the Keyscan host server. By default, these switches are turned off. For all settings, you must reference Keyscan hosted documentation provided with your Netcom 6 and 6P KHS units. 
Switch 11 and 12 are used for software selection. The default setting will be set to Aurora software. If you're installing an access control unit to be used with either System 7 or Vantage software, you must set these switches accordingly to the existing software that you're installing it for. Anytime that the dip switch settings are changed, a reset must be performed. This is done to have the unit recognize your new settings. The quickest way to perform a reset is to press S1 reset button momentarily. Simply press the S1 push button and the panel will emit a solid tone until you release the button. Once you release the button, your panel will be reset. Another way of resetting the panel is to simply power the unit down and powering it back up. In some cases, loading factory default settings may be required. You will need to do this any time that an access control unit has been newly installed, a firmware chip on the access control unit has been changed, switches for software selection have been changed, or if the access control unit protective cover has been removed to mount a Netcom 2P directly on the access control unit. To do a factory default, press the S1 reset button momentarily to reset your panel, wait approximately 5 seconds, and then press your S3 clear memory button. Once the factory default is initiated, you'll hear an intermittent tone emitted by the access control unit, as well as your status LED of the access control unit will flash red intermittently. Once the process is complete, your status LED on the control unit will turn amber, and the panel will stop emitting the intermittent tone. Note that this process can take up to two and a half minutes to complete. This is known as a clear memory with full memory test procedure. To perform a clear memory without the memory test, you will follow the same steps as described previously, except now we're going to incorporate our tamper button on the control unit. But to do this, you're going to press the switch 1 reset button, then you're going to wait a couple of seconds. You're going to trigger your tamper input on the control panel, and while you're triggering the tamper input on the control panel, you're going to press your switch 3 clear memory button to initiate the factory default. Once you've pressed your switch 3 and the factory default has been initiated, you can release your tamper switch trigger. This procedure will only take approximately 15 to 20 seconds. We hope today's tutorial on your dip switches, your S1 and your S3 push buttons, has clarified any questions you might have had. For full details, please reference the installation guide.